Welcome to Neon Speaks. I'm Neon de Verde Rosa. And all I can feel on this particular set right now is energy, energy, energy. And the energy is coming out of Hollywood, if I believe. And it's also coming out of Seattle. Why it's coming out of Seattle is because that's my incredible producer, who is absolutely amazing. She keeps me in one place. Well, I don't know if she keeps me in one place. But she keeps me kind of grounded. <laughs> I know that's very hard to do. So take it away, AJ. Thank you so much, Ninan. I am thrilled. I'm so excited. We have Tehran in the building today. Tehran Von Gasri. He is the coolest person on the planet. He was born in Washington, D.C., but he lives in Los Angeles now. And he is a international comedian, host, actor, TV, and radio personality. And he performs at the last the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles, and he has a, his own show called Thursdays with Tehran. So this is so exciting. Welcome, Tehran. How, how are you? Hello. Why, thank you, AJ. Well, uh, bonjour, Ninon. Bonjour, bonjour Ninon. Com comment allez-vous? Uh, ça, ça, ça va bien. Ça va bien, merci. Okay, so that's the end of our French. We both yeah. know that amount. <laughs> We've exhausted our, we've exhausted all our French, our French listeners. We've, we've exhausted our second language. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank I, you. I, I speak a couple languages, Nano. Oh, what do you speak? Come in handed. Well, that's the thing. You have to get to know more me, and you'll see. I'll throw out the... Shahida. 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 Yeah, I All like right. that. You see, Nino, right. Nino is also an international star. A lot of people well, need to understand. They, you look beyond. You're like, oh, look at that wonderful demure demeanor, that beautiful exterior. Oh, this is it. No, 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 no. She has lived a life. Nino has lived a life. You all don't know. She used to date Tupac. A lot of people don't know this about. They Nino. don't know that. Hey, wait, wait a second. I used to date a lot of people. Hang in a second. I dated Engelbert Humperdinck. Oh, there you go. So, I, was with Sinatra. I, was, I was with Frank Sinatra. Oh, I can name off a lot of them. Esther I, Williams. I knew Esther Williams very well. I'm sure. I, and I'm, I'm sure. You, were, you were the inspiration. You've been the muse behind the muses. You well, know, so actually, I did you know, she had an underwater swimming act. Well, she had a swimming act, as we all very well know. But I also had an underwater swimming act. But mine was a little different to hers. And it, I, I didn't get as paid as much as she got paid. So <laughs> it was definitely much different. But um, Tehran, um, AJ introduced you as um, performing every Thursday. You should, you should be performing every single day. But I think you are, aren't you? I perform every single day, mm -hmm. most days. Yeah. There are some days that I get days off. But you know in this business, there are no days off. This isn't a nine to five where we clock in and clock out. This is uh, seven days a week. Uh, every single day a year, 365 days a year, 366 on leap year. Yeah, is. This is how this business works because this isn't a business. It's our destiny. This isn't just a job. This is what we want to be. We don't have it's to. A we don't, exactly. It's a journey. It's a journey. It's a journey we're making and every single day is totally different. It is. We don't so have different. to be here. We get to be here. We get to be here. This is, we're all fortunate <laughs> to even be in this air. I get to be next to people who, who, dated Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> I did date him, but I did talk to him. <laughs> oh, and I, pretty close now. Pretty close. And, <laughs> that's right. And, and I have met Lay Twin. Oh, you're and, absolutely right, Tehran. So yes, but I want to get um, back to Tehran. He's such a fabulous comedian. You have performed a lot in Los Angeles. Tell us about that and the highlights of your career so far. Well, I have a show at the Lab Factory, as you mentioned. Every single Thursday is called Tear on Thursdays. I used to have a show every Monday, Thursday, but coming off pandemic, just making up all those absentee pandemic dates, yes. I've been gone so much on Mondays. Uh, I just flew back in for this from Vancouver. I was right. in Vancouver, came back in, and I'm so I'm so gone on the weekends that I haven't been able to. Uh, go back to my Monday show, but it will be coming back in 2022. Currently it's Thursdays, tear on Thursdays, every single Thursday night, 9.30 PM at the Lab Factory. And it's a star studded yeah. lineup and a star studded filled audience. And I mean that in every sense from 
Justin Bieber's to the Rihanna's to the average ordinary person, which does not exist because everybody who's in the audience is absolutely special. So everybody's there just having a great time, no matter who is on the lineup. And the one thing you know you'll get a lot of is a lot of Tehran. Love <laughs> it. I bet you will. Well, oh, you Tehran, will. you're like an entertainer. You kind of cover all of it, don't you? You entertain I, in different different ways. You have your comedic. Um, do you also sing as well, right? You know, when it comes to the singing, my singing is basically relegated to the shower, but I do do some singing on stage. I do have <laughs> some work of poetry that I perform. It is an all-encompassing entertainment experience, but the main crutch of it all is the comedy. And my comedy is my perspective. It's my truth. So it's the medicine that helps the sugar go down. As the sugary beating around the bush, we push, we push that to the side and we, we relinquish full truths on people in the best ways. I never make fun of people. I simply have fun with people and there is a big difference. Well, that's a big difference. That's like talking at someone or talking with someone. It's the same, that's the same difference. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's including the men. It's like presenting the men in a nice way because you become one. So now where do you get your comedic side from? Is that the family? Is that something you inherited? Is it something you made did yourself? How did you get there? Well, to be very, very fair, my family is one of the funniest families <laughs> on the face of the planet. The best part is they have no idea how funny they are. Ooh. My father is Iranian. My father's an Iranian immigrant and my mother is black. And just being in that family mixture in itself, which is surprising, I can't wait for my sitcom to come out, but <laughs> having an Iranian father and a black mother in one household and watching all the chaos that ensues is in itself comedy. It's my way of digesting the journey and experience of growing up in this household. And I present these truths, uh, uh, different forms of inclusivity, diversity, and basically cultural synchronicity, which I bring to the stage. I present a story that's so familiar to everyone because it is a part of everyone's story. And it reminds us all that we are all much more alike than we are different. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. So you actually bring in what happens every day over your period of life. You actually bring that into the audience, which is even funnier because people relate to that. Because Oh, that happened to me. Oh, that's just what I did with my husband. Oh, that's just what I did with my wife. Exactly. And, <laughs> and it, it is. It really is. I, I perform all over the world. And it's very interesting. You it's will. The same. Hear, I, it doesn't matter where you are. It, it doesn't matter where you are. We can be in Los Angeles or in Singapore. We can be in Riyadh or in Tel Aviv. There will be a woman complaining about her husband every single place in the world. There will be, no matter what the language is, someone will say something inevitably about their husband's boorish behavior, <laughs> about the interpersonal communications, about having children, about life. It's very similar. And that's an experience which I remind people on stage because we we always consider ourselves so different. We consider as if, and we are we really are not. We yeah. really are not. And that's a lot of a part, a big part of my comedy per se. And I also give a lot of social commentary, looking at the world from a bird's eye view, because that's what comedy is the best. Comedy is when you look at the world from a long lens. Tragedy yeah. is if you look at it up close. Well, I look at everything from a long lens. That long yeah. lens of comedic arrogance and superiority, which means that instead of crying and spending my time crying, I always I spend my time laughing and smiling, exactly. Absolutely, well, when you think of the world, everybody is totally the same. We're all the same. We've got the females and the males and you've got the children. We all have the same sort of body parts that might be shaped a little different. It might, the skin might be a different color. Yeah, well, we have non-binary people, not to exclude anyone non-binary or anyone who's no. pronouncing, no, I'll tell you. All we all have nipples. We all have nipples. I'll tell you that. I don't care. I who know. You are. I have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, for the most part, we all have nipples. I'll tell yes. you that. Yes. yes, and we all have belly buttons too. We, we all have belly buttons and toes. We should. Well, if you're we don't have a belly button, we've got a problem. <laughs> yeah, you, you, might, you might not have toes, but you should have a belly button unless you're a clone. I will tell you that. And these are the things that I bring up in my comedy is reminding people how much more alike we are. And it's so much fun, even with fantastic stories that you two have. I know you two are in 
in the nick of it all. I know both yeah. of you have these fabulous Forrest Gump-like existence. Where <laughs> if I look at every picture, if I look at a picture, if I look at if I look at the Marilyn uh, Monroe jumping out of a cake, I will see Ninon in the background coaching Marilyn Monroe how to sing Happy Birthday to JFK. If I look <laughs> deep enough, I will see AJ. I will see AJ at a Guns N' Roses concert <laughs> on stage teaching Axl Rose how to play the guitar. Like, I, I'm, I've seen this. I've seen you two coexist throughout the world. We are really, we're, we're, we're actually, we're both, we're both very different, but we're both the same. We're both very much alike. And I I found AJ um, in, in, actually, I found her on stage with a bunch of roses, actually. That's where I found her. <laughs> <laughs> <It's the actual. laughs> Yeah, she was and I, these roses up, and she was, and she was giving them all away to everybody. <laughs> no, she's roses just reminding people a, every, okay. every rose has their thorn. Every yeah, rose yeah. has their thorn. Every, uh, every rose has a place, <laughs> wherever that place may be. Now, Taran, what are you doing? You're, you're in, in Hollywood because you're on the Strip. You're on Sunset Strip. So where, and you're also, you, you, you actually perform in Canada as well. And so you, you do it. How do you get all your work on, and how do you get, do you have an agent? How do you do this? Well, I, of course, just like every single Hollywood person, I have the whole team. I've got the manager. I've got Rick Siegel and Ray Mohit, two of the best. I've got agents. I've got PR people and all that. But the truth is, it really comes down to you. A lot of people <laughs> always think, oh, if I just get an agent or if I just get a manager, and I always explain, Managers and agents get 10% each, right? Or, or at least that's what they should, 10%. Well, it's like any business. If I buy a t-shirt for $10, I won't sell it for $10. No. That's not how business works. I'll buy, if I'm selling a t-shirt for $10, it means I bought it for $5. Better yet, I bought it for two. And that's what managers and agents are. They aren't instead of the work, they are on top of the work. You put in a hundred and they add their 2% and their two cents. But the truth is it all comes from within you. It's yes. that journey that's important and the journey is everything in Farsi we have this wonderful poem that says which means remember the flight the bird is mortal and that's what it is all of our careers are mortal so remember that flight and enjoy the journey that's always been that. my thing. So always been my thing that we, we're going from A to B and we're trying to get over here and we're scrambling and we're doing all this stuff but we're not enjoying the journey. And the journey could be six years, 10 years, a year, a month, it could be anything, but you're missing it. Enjoy enjoy the way you're doing it. Enjoy, have fun with it. Enjoy where you're going, understand where you're going. And I think that's more, where do you get your poetry from? You say you like to, uh, are you gonna recite some poetry for me? You know, when it comes to poetry, I think there's a poet within all of us. I love, brilliance. I love greatness. So it doesn't matter if I get my poetry from Rumi, Hafez, Shakespeare, or from Jay-Z. I just love brilliance in any form, applicable sentences. And no one's more applicable to Instagram captions than Drake. Just remember that. If you're ever wondering what you need to put on your Instagram picture, just listen to half of a Drake song and you will have enough yeah. for pictures for a year. I'll Drake, is a, Drake is amazing. Yes. You know, it's funny you should say that. I'm a sonnet writer. I write oh, wow. sonnets. Sonnets. A That's sonnet, beautiful. A sonnet writer comes from Shakespeare. And you mentioned Shakespeare. Of and it's, um, it's, it's done in a different way. There's three paragraphs and they have to be small. Mine are not always small, but I, I, love, I love writing. And it, it's funny because you don't really, um, you cause will start something and you don't know what you're going to do and you don't know where it's going and you don't know what's happening. It all comes together. It's the most amazing thing. Do you find the same thing? And you know, when it comes to writing, a lot of people think that comedians, we just go up on stage no, you and don't. We just talk. <laughs> it looks so simple. And and in part, sure, that's that's what it is because comedy is a conversation, not a presentation. But the truth is, comedians are writers just like songwriters. Our our instead of songs which have rhythm and beat and verses and lines, we write jokes which have very similar moving parts. And there is a rhythm and there's a beat. And the same way, and this is so amazing when Chappelle put it this way, is a singer might go on stage and their band will play instruments and that becomes music. Well, as comedians, we go on stage and our instruments are the audience and the music we make is laughter. 
And that comes from simply practice makes perfect. So when you're sitting there writing, it might just come to you. It might get that writer's block moment where it takes time. Either way, it all comes from within. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You're right. Yes, AJ. You're right. And because it comes, um, there's some people that can write and some people can't write because they don't have that inspiration or they don't have that flow or they don't let go. And they I don't let go. Don't let go. They don't let go of, of all this craziness. And I, I, I teach a lot of this to people to let go of all these crazy things you're thinking you should do or shouldn't do and this and that. Never let it all go and just do what you want to do because exactly. everybody else is going to do that. But I think comedians, you know, Shecky Green, I'm quite sure you've heard of Shecky Green. He was a very well, he's a good friend of mine. And he would come on stage and, and he was so natural at what he did. So and, and he did, I mean, obviously he had planned something. He's got it in his head. We all do that. But also going on stage and then your audience, do you change some things when you go out there and you see you've got, oops, I've got a different audience than I thought I was going to have. So maybe I will do this and this instead of that and that. Well, I'm definitely culturally and aware or audience aware. I'm a comedian, not a caterer. When I go on stage, I'm not catering to the crowd. I'm comedying for the crowd, which means that I am presenting the realest part of me to the truest part of you. And that's yeah. why when comedians go on stage, the first thing most comedians will do is remove the mic stand. And what we are doing is physically, metaphorically speaking, and also just almost spiritually removing that wall between us and you. We're being as vulnerable as we possibly can. Now, both of you are performers and you know, after a performance, you almost feel so exhausted. And the reason you feel exhausted is because much like how Voldemort in the Harry Potter series breaks up his soul into seven pieces and that becomes the Horcrux. Every time you perform, and if it's a true performance, you're giving the audience a piece of your soul. And yes. so that's why we just need some time to re-energize and recharge because we've literally given a piece of us to every single person out there, whether it's 30, 300 or 300,000, it okay. doesn't matter. And so that's where, that's where truest comedy or truest, anything that's an art form really comes from. And I love that. And I think that's where love comes from, too. It's all about love and the heart and the core, the center, which we all are connected to. And I love your message. Isn't that right, Ninon? Absolutely. It's, it's definitely right. And are you married? I'm not. I am not. not. I'm way too toxic to give out my heart. I was going to say, you're probably too busy. <laughs> <laughs> it's too now, busy it is everyone in hollywood when you it's very difficult to have relationships when you're in hollywood and i'm glad you brought this up because you're always moving and on the go which is why it's such a difficult and those are such volatile situations they, they are and to sort of tie anything down and you don't want to be tied down anyway because you might be as you said you might be in hollywood one time and then the next day you're going to be in canada and the next day you're going to be in oklahoma who knows That's how it works. Okay and and if you're true to what you want to do you will be in every one of those places and you never say no it's very funny i just did something this morning it was a very small thing i had to do but when i say no absolutely not i'm gonna i don't care how small it is i'm gonna go and do it because that's the business. That's what you do. You don't say, well, I don't think I'll do that. And I don't think you don't do that. You you take on everything that makes you who you are. And that's what makes you who you are. How often do you change your um, your program? Do you change it often or do you come out differently every time? I'm sure you're different every time you come on stage. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm fortunate enough to still be in that phase where I'm, I'm young and hungry and looking oh, at God. the world from a very unique perspective. I can only imagine what it's like for the people who are at the top where they're not in it. It's always, it's just once again, going back to that, that music comparison, the first album is usually your best because it's the one you've had your whole life to write. After that, you're on the road and now you might write another album in a year or two years, but your experiences are limited. Comedy is based on experience. So the more you're in the trenches, the more you're in that gutter and grinding, the more the more comedy you come up with. And right now I am in the gutter and in the trenches and just fortunate enough to come up with so much new material time and time again. 
You know, you are amazing. You're absolutely amazing. I'm sorry, Nina. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Now I was gonna. I was going to say, you know, people might not know this, or they do know this, and they think it's kind of a game, or they think it's like, you know, silly. Are you always on? Do you feel that you not that you have to always be on, but do you feel that you're always on with those new thoughts and the new energy, and you're you're, you're kind of always on, always ready, and always on? Are you? You know, Nina. I'll tell you something. I'm not always on, but I am always in that mindset, which often gets me in trouble because to, the, <laughs> to, to someone else, it could be a complete tragedy. They're looking at it up close. And to me, I'm still looking at it a, at a long lens. And it sometimes it can be extremely inappropriate, whether I make the wrong comment at an airport or at a funeral. <laughs> This and this hasn't changed. That's who I am, right? That's why yes. I became this. I I was a great student, but also let's not let's not act like I wasn't the getting the you in behavior since kindergarten. So <laughs> I've I've had the smart mouth. Now, thankfully, I just use it properly. Yeah. I have a question, if I may. What was it like growing up with a um, with being half Persian and half Black? Um, can you tell us some of the wonderful things that these beautiful cultures that you are blessed to be a part of? Tell us, share with us your heart a little bit about that, Tehran. Hey, AJ, you're such a beautiful soul. It was horrible and tragic. Do you understand? <laughs> It was a war zone every day, and it was it was us against the world. It was us against each other. My my parents are some of the most wonderful people on the planet. They are so sweet and so kind, and have some of the best best fights I have ever seen. Because you have these two strong, dominant cultures clashing in a lot of ways, and that's what I mean about intersectionality as well. Is because you realize how many things overlap. They just don't see it. They just don't see it. So you have these warm, passionate cultures that can also come off at some times, it can come off confrontational when the truth is they just care so much about so many things and it's just how they communicate. And so watching this come off and my parents were so fun. They were so funny. They would say the funniest <laughs> things in different languages, which made it even more fun. And to make it even crazier, okay, so yes, I'm half Persian, half black. My father's Persian, my, mo my mother's black. The that best is, of both worlds. You've got I the feel, best of both worlds. Yeah. I agree, I like it. It's like it's like having all their powers, but none of their weaknesses, right? But then- You have you that mixture. This. You've got yep. the mixture of both of them. Exactly. And then on my father's side, his family is Muslim and Zoroastrian. My, my grandfather was Muslim, my grandmother's Zoroastrian. On my mother's side, she's black, my grandfather was Baptist. My grandmother, who's still alive, is Jewish. Like, do you understand I was circumcised 14 times? These aren't jokes. This is my life, okay? Like, when I hear Shabbat Shalom, I cover and run. Like, these aren't funny, you know? This is how I just had so much going on, and I would I would never have it any other way. Yeah. But isn't You're that, so blessed. Isn't that what that has made you? All that that was out there with your mom and your dad and your grandparents and whoever, and my siblings, yeah. You know, you're, how many? Oh, well, you have brothers and sisters. How I many? do. There's five of us total. I'm the oldest, but we're all very close in age. So it's very difficult to decipher, especially since the youngest ones are the most responsible. But <laughs> we're looking at it from the perspective of just growing up in America at a time where being Middle Eastern isn't prized, where being African American is, is its own experience. Of and course. we've seen this all collide and you're looking at it and it really comes down to at the base and the core. I wish more people understood that people are simply just people. Yeah. It's my greatest thing. I've never understood all this stuff that goes on because as I said earlier, we're all the same. We all just have little different We our looks may be different, our skin is different, everything, but we're all basically the same. We're all trying to make a living. We're all trying to yes. find out who we are. It takes a little while to find out who we are to start with. I mean, we, you know, we have one thing to cope with in this world. There's only one thing we really have to look after, and that's ourselves. Well, well I, have, point. Yeah, I have point. to say, I, I do love falafels, so I just wanted to get that in. And also, I wanted to ask this <laughs> beautiful... <laughs> <laughs> this like <laughs> oh, AJ, AJ. You, you are our Habibi. How's that? Yeah. Habibi. 
So happy uh, today. Good for you. Uh, I wanted to ask um, this wonderful picture that you got here taken. Um, when was that taken and where was it? And uh, it's such a beautiful photo of you. Tell yeah, us a little bit about that. This picture right here was taken, I think it was right before the pandemic. I had a wonderful photographer who took this picture, Tony. She's got a brilliant eye and any good photographer is not just snap, snap, take picture. Mm. It's this is the way I see the world. Now I want you to see it the way I do. And in Hollywood, headshots are everything. It's your introduction. Oh. You only get one chance to make a first impression. The funniest thing is how many people think that the headshot is the only thing. They're like, I'm getting new headshots. And once I get that, <laughs> the sky's <laughs> the limit. It doesn't work that way either. However, <laughs> you should invest in yourself put back. Remember, this is a business. So even when you make money, you have to invest in yourself. Take those acting classes, take those, take those commercial classes, whatever it is, writing classes, whatever it is, get those headshots. However you can invest, invest in your dream, invest in your destiny. And Nina, I'm sorry, we're going to have to wrap it up. So sorry. Okay, that's very well said. Um, uh, Talan, how can anybody get hold of you? Well, you can always find me at the Laugh Factory every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Coming soon, we'll be back on Monday nights. And find me all across the board at I-A-M-T-E-H-R-A-N. My name is Tehran, like the capital of Iran. My mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all social media is at I am Tehran. And if you don't know how to spell Tehran, just watch Fox News. It's literally on there every day. They literally <laughs> go to Touché. the Touché. capital of Iran somehow every day. And I just want you all to remember love each other's differences as much as we are the same. Well, I'm going to elaborate on that and I'm going to ask all my audience and everybody, take a leaf out of Tehran's book. Um, he has a great, he's had to sort of, he's, he's had two battles to fight, but he hasn't had to fight any one of them. He's grown up in an incredible family with uh, four other um, brothers and sisters and a mum and dad, and he's done extremely well, but he has done what he wanted to do. And he caught it all from his family. Um, and he doesn't let anything hold him back, regardless of, of where he comes from, who he is or anything. And that's how we should all be. Let's, you know, put all this stuff aside and let's just love each other and be exactly. together. And or not even love together. each other. Don't love, hate each other. How about love that? Love each other. Just, yeah. just love each other. It doesn't cost a it doesn't cost a it dime. Doesn't cost a thing. It doesn't cost a thing. And, and you know, this is your, I did it my way. I did it my way. <laughs> yes, I did it my way. You have um, to wrap it up, Ninon. Okay, yeah, let's thank go. you, go. everybody. Thank you, Taran. Thank you, everybody out there, to our audience. It's great. Don't forget we're on Roku. Take care.